Oceans 234 is a full-service oceanfront restaurant that excels in delivering a memorable dining experience. Now, here's your host for the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy Viteri. Thank you very much, and here we are today at Oceans 234 with Danielle Rossi. Thank you, Danielle, Thank for you. having us. Thanks for having me. Such a pleasure. I moved here about three, four years ago. Okay. And when I moved here, I told my husband, okay, well, how about we start looking for a restaurant so we can go, oh, not nice. to buy it, not to buy it, but I wanted to go and have lunch when we were looking for houses, and I wanted to have lunch right in front of the ocean. Nice. And this was the very first, first place. restaurant that we came nice. to. Nice, I love that story, <laughs> love yes. that. Yes, so it is a pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. Pleasure. Um, so the reason we have Danielle here today is because we wanted to talk to, as you know, entrepreneurs that can inspire other entrepreneurs. Um, so Danielle, why don't you tell us a little bit about your story? I know <laughs> that you opened this restaurant about tw uh, 19 years ago, yep. um, but let's go back a little bit more and why don't you tell us what were you doing before then? When I was 19 years old. Um, I came here to get a waitressing job and I thought I was going to go to school. Um, fast forward now 20 years later, I haven't left, nor have I gone to school. <laughs> so um, I, I, like I said, I started as a waitress. This was a diner. Um, next door was a gas station, if you don't know the area. Um, so Deerfield has really transformed in the time that I've been here. Um, not just the restaurant, but the whole destination. Um, so I started here. Um, my my um, first husband was the owner's son, um, and he passed away unexpectedly. And my mother-in-law, who lived up north and was retired, um, said, "If you stay with me," um, she was working on a redevelopment of the area. She said, "You know, I'll keep the restaurant. I won't sell it. Let's let's see how it how it goes." Um, and so I stayed on with her. She uh, uh, always. You know, she just she gave me full control, and um, you know, I I earned it a little bit. I mean, I handled. I always say that I had this um, huge sense of responsibility. So anything that crossed my path, I kind of owned and, mm -hmm. and handled. And so by default, I became the point person. Right. And that's really kind of how I developed my role with her. And um, she was an amazing mentor and um, just gave me great opportunities. So through the years, we knocked down what was the ranch house at that time. It was this diner and we built Oceans 234. And then uh, fast forward a couple of years later, um, I had a, a couple other restaurants on my own. And then I purchased this restaurant to own it independently. So I've been here uh, on my own since then. And it's, wow. it's been great, you know. We could then say that you have been an entrepreneur your whole life. Yeah. <laughs> by by whether like, I knew it or not, yes. Right, right. It's not like you transition like most people from right. the corporate world to an entrepreneur. Right. It's like you were born an entrepreneur. Right. Like, yeah. My mother-in-law and I, we always joke. She's like, how did you go from walking in and getting hired to like managing my you know managing my restaurant yeah. and, and taking over and um, I think it goes back to that responsibility thing and um, I don't know why but if something crossed my path you know I've got to fix it I've got to handle it I can't you know most people are like oh whoever's job it is they'll they'll take it right get it done yeah and I just I own anything that crosses my path you know right. some might call it bossy some might say it's <laughs> ego um, but problem solver yeah I'm a problem solver. there we go and so by like I said by default all of a sudden I'm ca juggling all the balls and I have everything and you know I'm like all right let's, what's next what do we have to do with this right. how do we solve this it's not enough just to put a band-aid on it right, um, right and so my role and, and my position and what I've done has really just evolved from that sense of you know, responsibility slash bossiness. <laughs> I love that right? bossiness. Yeah. Actually, would you call it a type A, maybe? Yeah, um, Personality? Yes, I speak in, I, I everything I, I do is, that. is in bullet points. Yeah. We're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. So why don't you tell me a little bit, like, a day in the life of Danielle. Right, sure. Maybe 10 years ago. Versus then, now. Versus now. I always joke that if you were here the first five years, like, I go like this. Like, how was your experience? I Because who knows how it was on any given day. We really uh, um, had no idea what I was doing and just working as hard as we could 
hard as I could to kind of hold all the pieces together um, and realize that I was um, trying to prove myself by doing it all, but I wasn't doing myself any favors or growing the business in any way. Mm -hmm. And then one day I heard, you shouldn't work in your business, you should work on your business. And I swear to you that changed my whole world. Um, and can you I, go deeper on that so yeah, we can absolutely. actually share with so the I rest would of be, the world what that really means? You know, had to have the final say on everything. I didn't empower people to 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 handle things. I yep. didn't know what it meant to really coach or mentor, you know, the, the people that were around me. Um, and therefore, I was stuck in the day-to-day -day operations. Would you was, say that you were micromanaging? Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, complete micromanaged. All right. um, and it was difficult and you can't grow. You can't see outside of what you have to do today because there's just, your to-do list is this long. Right. Um, and it took me, I'd say maybe two, three, four years to transition to a place that, you know, I could grow my business. I could see the things that we needed. Um, and for a moment you feel like maybe I'm not needed because they don't need you on a day-to-day -day basis but you realize that your value comes in other areas, whether it's business development, seeing the bigger picture, um, and that, that was just a game changer for me. And that took me from you know, being an employee of myself, being my own employee, to really owning and operating my business. And we did a big renovation three years ago where we completely gutted the whole interior, and wow. um, I say it's just a, been a complete evolution. You know, from where we were to where we are now. So I guess at that point you started delegating. Yes. You started empowering mm -hmm. people within your organization. You know, we were setting things up here, the lights mm -hmm. and all that, and you know, we were talking about how we need to let the experts right. do their job. Yeah, and I really know where I, what areas I don't excel in, and to finding those people to fill those gaps, and that is what create, makes our team, I think, so great now is that everybody's good at what they do and it creates like a, a whole synergy exactly um you know we don't have three people that are good at one thing and somebody who's not good at another everybody's kind of fills fills that that the, their team role to create that whole collaboration uh, leadership team right yeah. i don't think i always appreciated people for their skill set and instead of instead of appreciating them for their skill set i was always saying like they lack in this area mm -hmm. so and I'd, I'd be like you got to get better at this well no they don't you know yes they may need to work on that area but why don't I just use them in the area they're really good at, right. like in an exponential way, rather than constantly trying to pull them in a direction they're not so good at. When I was able to step out of that day-to-day -day operation and step out of the grind, um, I saw the missed opportunities and the potential, and I still see that. We always talk about that gap. and. Um, when we did the renovation, that was the main purpose of the renovation. You know, uh, we we uh, relied on our location. We're on the ocean. People are going to come here anyway. There's not many places you can go and dine right on the ocean. Um, but there's not. I can testify that, for that. <laughs> it's, like, it's one of the best views. You haven't been to this restaurant. It's a beautiful, amazing thing. Thank you. Yes, thank yes. you. So the the view kind of um, made up for things maybe that weren't. Weren't, weren't as good and I realized, wait a minute, what if we're more than just a tourist trap? What if we really have amazing food and we elevate our, our standards of service? You know, how much better can we be? And that's what I realized would be the differential between us and some of the other restaurants in the area, other oceanfront restaurants, you know, in South Florida. Um, and that's helped us to start to close that gap. This concludes part one of Sandy's interview with Danielle from Oceans 234. Part two, coming soon. Check back for the conclusion to the interview with Sandy and Danielle at Oceans 234. Now we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.